I usually don't ask things of people who watch my videos, but in this case, I'm going to, to plead and beg with you to share this with as many people as you know who might be working with uh, crystal radios. I found a really insidious problem in one of the products which causes the thing to stop working. And the reason this is important is because I got my start in the technology industry because of, well, almost 60 years ago, I built one of these and I thought it was so miraculous that it got me interested in electronics and, you know, radios and stuff like that. And the reason I put out a lot of these videos is to help people along. I mean, I get a lot of comments about people saying, yeah, my, my father and I built one, uh, it brings back memories. You know, I'm going to build one with my kids or my grandkids, whatever like that. And that's really good. But what's really disappointing is when people write and say, we built one and it doesn't work and I've checked everything and it just, it just doesn't happen. You know, in the past, I've always suspected maybe, you know, it's just a bad connection or something, or they didn't scrape the wire off or, you know, something like that because, wow, these things are almost foolproof. But a little while ago, I did a video on fake uh, 1N34A diodes, and this problem is so much worse because the fake diodes, at least you get something, you know, you'll, you'll get sound at maybe half volume or whatever, what it could be, but it's, it's going to work and it's not going to be totally disappointing. This new fail is, well, let me just tell you what I was doing. I was working on a new crystal radio design. Uh, it's really loud, really, you know, really worked well. And then it just like over a, one second, it just, the volume went from being loud to nothing, just off. So I thought, wow, you know, the first thing I suspected was the diode. Maybe I burned out the diode. So I got out another diode, put it in place, nothing. So, okay, the next thing is I must have a broken connection somewhere. So I started looking, I checked all my connections, got out the, the ohm meter, checked everything. It was good. Finally, I said, well, the only thing left is this piezoelectric, piezoelectric earphone. And I mean, you know, I say that this is kind of a, a necessary thing. Tracked it down to this. And then I said, okay, so what's going on here? Got to know why it quit working. And I plugged it into my old Radio Shack transistor radio and I got nothing. So, okay, that kind of confirms that the earphone is bad because if it won't drive from an amplifier, it's certainly not going to drive from a crystal radio. So I fussed with that for a little while, gave up. Finally, in an act of, of retaliation, I was going to destroy the thing and I just deliberately shorted it across the 9 volt battery in the in the uh, transistor radio, it went clack, clack. And so out of curiosity, I hooked it up again and it worked. I'm afraid what's going to happen is people are going to build a, you know, take the time to build one of these crystal radios. It's not going to work and it's going to be very disappointing. So I want to get the word out to make sure that if people have an issue that they check the, the earphone and replace it with another one. Uh, the only thing I can find now, I've been using these for a long time and I just recently ordered new ones and the new ones are the ones giving me the trouble. And the only difference I really see is that one is made in Japan. The old one is made in Japan and the new one is made in Taiwan. Both of mine that I ordered do the same thing. They do this lockup thing. Yeah. So I've got one of the type that quits on me and then I've got another type that's been very reliable. And I've cut them apart. You can see the earpieces. Uh, let's get in here really close. And I think you can see some significant differences in construction. Y yeah, I mean, if nothing else, uh, maybe it'll lead to a way to fix these or at least identify them so people don't uh, get the bad ones. The most apparent difference is this brown spot right here, which appears to be just ordinary glue. And one of the wires comes up here and they just glued it to the surface. You can't tell it now, but I had to rip this off of here. You can see the glue around here. This one was actually glued down. This uh, diaphragm was glued down and this one was not. This one sounds like aluminum. And this one sounds like steel, stainless steel maybe. Um, I think the most telling thing is on the backside. 
So let me see if I can show you inside here. It's kind of tight. We have the two contacts from the from the plug so it's a two wire system and they just have some copper bands very tiny copper bands that go from the wire one of them is soldered directly to the back of the piezo uh, emitter right there and the other one wraps around to the top and this just appears to be ordinary glue um, I guess the contact is coming from where it goes over the edge here. The edge is kind of sharp. And I'm guessing that what happens is over time, the aluminum, as aluminum does, oxidizes. And you have dissimilar metal. You have copper and aluminum. It uh, oxidizes and therefore the sound goes away. And then when you shock it or bang it or whatever, there's a couple people who said they can bang it and get the sound back. Um, that you scrape enough of the oxide away to allow for an electrical path. Um, yeah, there's been some people who, uh, to fix this, they uh, drilled, they took off this back cover. I can do that in a second. They drilled through here and without ungluing this, ran a wire back up here and attached it here. Um, soldering to aluminum, I don't know. I haven't had a lot of success. Okay, so that's the bad one. Let's compare it to the, to the one that doesn't fail on me. You can see that the wire just comes up here and directly attaches to the piezo emitter. And they have it soldered. Both wires are soldered. Let me get my finger out of the way. That one's soldered there and that one's soldered there. There's no uh, like friction fit or anything like that. Okay, let's uh, open the back here. Make sure you can see this. Oh, baby, that's on there tight. Okay. Yeah, so you can see that this is just uh, the wire ends here and then you can see a little bit of that copper tab right there at the end of that screwdriver and it comes up here and so again one of the fixes was to drill a small hole and then to feed a wire up drill another small hole here put the wire through here and connect it to the uh, to the diaphragm um, somebody else just left me a comment and said that they had a Cub Scout troop that uh, they, you know, many years ago that they put these together and a lot of them didn't work. And he says, now, now I know why. He said, we tracked it down to the earphone, but we didn't know what was going on. Uh, I saw another note uh, on a web page. A guy ordered a hundred of these for uh, crystal radios. And he said out of a hundred, 38 of this style didn't work. What I have found is you need to cut these open because the, the ones that aren't reliable are glued shut, of course. And you open it up and right here, there's a wire that comes up from the bottom and it's glued down with this brown glue. And the first fix I found is the high dollar one. And that is where you buy some of this liquid solder. This is not the junk you buy at the hardware store. This is stuff you get from a specialty electronics store it is two dollars for 0.5 milliliters yeah that's half a milliliter that's like zero and you put a little dab right there where the wire crosses the uh, crosses the diaphragm up on top and so far it's worked but i'll be honest i'm not impressed with this liquid solder the resistance is really high and i don't know how long it's going to maintain that contact so what is the cheap fix? Well, the cheap fix is the one I favor. You go out and you buy a bag of these things. These are the driven elements. This is the piezoelectric element. They're 20 millimeter. This bag costs 60 cents. Yes, 0.6 dollars. Um, that's not 60 dollars, that's 0.6 dollars. You get 10 of them. And what you do is you take your, your uh, 
your earphone, you cut it open just like the other one. And let me unscrew this so we can see what's going on back here. There we are. Take your wire, you drill a hole. I use my soldering iron. Yes, confession. And you run the wire through the back, you tie a knot in it, and then you solder one wire right there. There we go. One wire in the center, and you solder one wire at the outside. Now these brass colored ones, these are obviously tinned with brass or plated with brass, and they solder very nicely. So one here, one here. Then we just carefully fold everything back up inside here like that. Put the earpiece back on there. And then we'll put one drop of super glue on there to hold it. Then we just reattach our back like this. Uh, this is the strain relief, this little tube right here. Just got to make sure that's in the right place. Put this thing back on here. This retainer piece. Then we do the screw like that. Find where the screw starts. There we go. A little bit of a click. Get it down and then again, once the super glue is dry, don't put it in your ear before then. Once the super glue is dry, then it's ready to go and that is the permanent fix. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, kind of a tough situation for these things that so many of them are out there that aren't any good. Uh, but anyway, I think this repair you'll find uh, adequate for a very long time. Okay, well, that was it. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY crystal radioing.